It is a personal thing. And it is a precious thing. A personal thing. A particular thing. And a precious thing. And I told him we were getting close to the end when I got to this part. Because I want you to see this. That personal thing that he said to keep is personal to you. No one else has the exact same good thing that's the exact incredible station that God has given to you. No one could do what you are made to do. God didn't make any two people the same. God did not make any two people with the exact same purpose. And I know the ultimate purpose is to bring glory to Him. But there are people that you can reach with your personality, your temperament, and where God has brought you and the things He's brought you through that somebody else will never be able to reach. That somebody else will not even be able to talk to. Will not even be able to get in the door of. It's personal. This good thing that God has given you, this incredible station that God has given you, is very personal. And you have to keep it. You have to keep it. He tells you by the Holy Ghost, letting the Holy Ghost, giving that power of the Holy Ghost to help you, to enable you. You have to keep this. That good thing it's not just personal, but a good thing is particular. He describes it two ways. He describes it as a blessing. And we'll find that in verse number 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. The gift of God. It's a blessing. It's a gift. God has given you this particular gift. He's given some the gift to sing. He's given some the gift to speak. He's given some the, the gift to where they can go out there and minister through being able to do different things. They, their mind is great in it, as an orator. I, I think of uh, some men who I know who their minds they just are deep thinkers. And so they can talk to somebody who's of an educated background. And they could talk to those educators of the world. And they could get into discussion with them. And they can hold their own because of the fact that they are deep thinkers and they've thought all these things through. And when they're trying to tell them, twist it, and tell them that the Scripture really doesn't mean this, they're able to go back and open the Scriptures and, and tell them, here's what God says. And here's why it only makes sense. There's those kind. And then there's those that can get out on the streets, go into their jailhouse and the highways and hedges and compel them to come in and have a way with people. I think of men, and I, I, I know they're not all uh, baptistic people, but I think of men like a John Calvin. And I am not a Calvinist. And he had some things he was wrong about. But he was a deep thinker. And he wrote his theology out, could write it out, and anybody who read it could say, I can see where he makes sense. And then they'll go back and search the scriptures and they'll grow from that to say, okay, he made sense here, but he missed this. But a good starting point. That's why you get men like a Charles Spurgeon who read after him. And men like that who, read, who we think of as princes of preachers. We think of the men of old who studied, studied men. But then there's those simple men who can go into the jailhouse and can just stand up and preach, thus saith the Scriptures. And those men out there are saying, I understand what he's saying. Because God gives everybody a special gift. Stir up the gift that is in you. Is your gift one of exhortation? Is your gift one of encouragement? Is your gift a gift of exposition? And I believe all of those have to be intertwined to some degree. But some men are a whole lot better at one than the other. I've said often in our November meeting, the reason I've used the three men that I've used 
Brother Mark Thrift, Brother Terry Danford, and Brother Rob Pelkey is because Brother Pelkey is such an encourager. Brother Thrift, he is an expositor extraordinaire. And Brother Danford, he'll never leave you without an exhortation to do right, live right, walk right. Never has that I've heard him that he's not exhorting me. And you say, what are you talking about? God gave each of them different gifts. And God gave you a gift. And you need to stir it up. It's a particular thing. That good thing is a particular thing. It's personal to you. It's a particular thing. Uh, it's particular in the fact, of the fact that it is a blessing, but it's also not only a blessing, but it's a burden. He tells them in chapter 1, verse number 8, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. There are afflictions that go with your gift. You're gifted in one area, it's going to make it to where there's going to be other things that come along with that that will be afflictions. Things that will be hard times. The things that you will have to overcome. Because if you're going to accomplish what God wants you to accomplish, you will have enemies that will battle against you. I use the illustrations of those who, uh, maybe like a, a Tim Tebow who was a football player. And a football player, a great one, a fantastic football player. And he went through Florida and uh, played at Florida. It was it Florida or Florida State? I can't remember one of them two. And he played there and got the Heisman Trophy, I believe. He was a great quarterback. An inspiration to people. He could speak and inspire people. He's inspiring people even these days that he lives in now. As he plays baseball at, at Broadway. Well, not right now he's not. But, uh, but he, he's, he's that guy. He's a very much of an athlete. But there's temptations that come with that life. There's trials that come with that life. And he's saying, and he has to balance these things out. Figure out, okay, here I, I, I can be an inspiration to these folks and testify of the Lord and His goodness to these people. I can hold Bible studies here in the locker room or with people that I come in contact with. I can do this. I can, I can encourage them. We can have prayer. And I can pray with these people. But because I'm a great football player and I made it to the NFL, there's a lot of people that's going to be attacking me because I play football on Sunday. And let me say, I've never seen him play football a day in my life. Especially since he's been in the NFL. You say, why? I've not watched football. I don't know the last time I watched a football game on Sunday. I don't keep up with the races on Sundays neither. I'm trying to get you to understand there's afflictions that go with it. I'm not saying he's right or wrong. He has to be persuaded in his own mind. But with the gift that went with it, he has to have the afflictions. There's the blessing and there's the burden. What are you going to do? How are you going to fulfill the ministry God's given you? How are you going to accomplish this thing? It's a blessing, but there are burdens that go with it. To be gifted with great finances. And all of a sudden you find, I got great finances. Instead of being able to be a giver, you become a getter. Saying, I'm going to get everything I can. I'm going to have, I'm going to have, I'm going to have. And the only people I'm going to share with is those rich friends of mine. You say there's not people like that? Yes, there are. But then there's those who get so rich and they're taking their riches and they're giving them to the hospitals. They're giving them to this. They're giving them to that. They're giving their money away. I read about men like J.C. Uh, Penney and uh, um, Laterno, Mr. Laterno, who uh, and, and these men who had so much money, they made millions and millions of dollars, but they were given 90% of it away. You say, how did they do that? God had gave them a gift that was a blessing, but they were attacked because they had these money sometimes. And they had a temptation sometimes to get 
But they said, I'd rather give than get. There's things that go with every blessing you get that are burdens. I don't know what God's given you as your blessing. But I tell you this, He's giving you a burden that goes with it. For a particular, every person has a particular place, a particular purpose. Let me tell you this. This good thing is precious. It's yours. Nobody else has the exact same gift you have. Is your gift the ability to work on things around the house of God and, and have that kind of work, that ability, that, that gift to where you can work on things and you can uh, mechanically, very mechanically inclined and all that kind of stuff or very carpentry oriented? Is that a gift that somebody's got? And guess what? God says, take that gift and be a blessing. And then you say, but everybody needs something all the time. And I've got so much I've got to get done. The burden. What am I trying to get people to understand? It's yours. You have something nobody else has the exact thing. It makes you valuable to others. If everybody was exactly the same, if everybody could sing as good as everybody else, why would you want to bring in a singer? I can do that good. Look, why would you want to, if everybody preached the same, then why would you bring in special preachers? Why would you do these things? Why would you bring, why would you use somebody's ministry if you could already do everything that they can do? You wouldn't need each other. Your value is in the fact that you have a gift that God has given you. It's a particular gift. It's a personal gift. It's a precious gift. Paul shows the example of his blessing, his burden, his personal, particular, precious station that God has given him. In verse 11, he tells us, Weren't you I'm appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles? Verse 12, for which cause I also suffer these things. You'll see the blessing will see the burden. He told Timothy, your incredible station is not the same as mine. But you have one. It's a blessing. It's a burden. I hear evangelists, young evangelists, say, oh, I wish I was a pastor. Because then I wouldn't be on the road all the time. Then I wouldn't have to worry about the cancel my meat and losing my money. And I hear pastors, oh, I wish I was an evangelist. Can I say, oh, you got an incredible station. Whatever your place is in the house of God, with the people of God, in this world, in this life, just stay in your station by the power of the person of the Holy Spirit. Let Him do all that work in you. And just stay faithful to the cause of Christ until it's over. Because you've got an incredible station. It's a blessing. Even though sometimes it's a burden. I just want you to know. He was trying to tell Timothy. That good thing. That place God's put you. That thing that God's given you to do. That no one else can do it quite like you. Nobody else can do it for you. It's personal. It's particular. And it's a good thing. Precious. Brethren, I just want you to know today. God has something for you to do. God has something for this church to do. God has something for us as a people today. I just want you to know this. Because it's an incredible station. And if we consider, if we consider the indwelling spirit that God's given us, that gift that God's given us, that is the exhaustible scriptures that God has given us. The irreversible salvation that God has given us. It should charge you and encourage you to where you'd say, I will stay and do the incredible station that God has given me in life. But if you don't know Christ, you don't have an irreversible salvation. You don't have any words. But you can get into the 
these awesome scriptures. You meet the Christ who has it. Irresistible. Irresistible. I was about to become callous and then say it was irresistible grace. The problem is you resist it. That's why you don't have salvation. You don't have that irreversible salvation. That's why you don't have the influence of spirit. And that's why you don't have the incredible station. If you don't know him, the incomprehensible prophets. Father, I pray that you would help us. Enable us by grace to live today and live today. Living in that amazing grace that only you can give. That amazing grace that you have given for us. How we live through that amazing grace. Amazing grace. Ministry of God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.